Hi there, I'm Michelle the Painter from Berkshire Paint and Sip, and this is Paint and Sip at Home. Alright, so today I'm going to be painting sky lanterns and I'm sipping on some raspberry tea and if you enjoy this process I do hope that you like and subscribe to my channel and that you also check out my Patreon page where you're going to find additional painting perks. So let's get painting and let's get sipping. Alright, so for my materials today, I'm going to be using a stretched and primed 16 by 20 inch canvas. If you're painting along with me, you could certainly switch up the size, but that's what I'll be using. I'm going to be using acrylic paint today. My colors are titanium white, ultramarine blue, Mars black, burnt umber, which I like to call brown, fire red, chrome yellow, and burnt sienna, which sometimes I'll call rust. And of course, you can certainly switch up those colors if you'd like. For my tools today, I have a white piece of chalk that I'll be using for some drawing. And then I have three brushes from my brush line, Michelle the Painter brushes. They are a one inch wide flat bristle brush, a number eight round synthetic brush, and a number two round synthetic brush. And I'll refer to these as small, medium, and large as we go through the painting process. And of course, you could switch those up if you like. If you're painting along with me, you'll probably want to have a cup of water for washing your brushes, as well as a paper towel for drying your brushes. And down below this video, in the video description, I will be providing you with a couple of additional resources that can help you throughout your painting process. One of them is a link where you can purchase the same exact paint kit that I'm using from the same size and type of canvas to the same type of paint and brushes and all the good stuff in between. So that's there. There's also a link where you can download a free image of the final painting. So you can print that and use it as visual reference as you go through the painting process. And there's also written step-by-step -step instructions down there for you as well. And that's all we're going to need today. All right, so what we're going to do for the first step is we're going to be painting our sky. I'm going to be using my large bristle brush. The colors I'm using are black, brown, blue, and white. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to pre-mix myself two custom colors. I'm going to be creating a nice dark blue that we'll be using at the top. It's going to fade into a grayish color that we'll be making a custom gray, and then we'll make it even lighter down at the bottom of the sky. I'm going to use my large brush to paint, but I'm going to use my medium brush to mix some colors so you can see where I'm headed. So I've got my colors pre-mixed so you can see what I'm aiming for. This is going to be my dark blue at the top, and this will be my gray that I'll use a lot in the middle and as I go down towards the bottom. So I'm going to mix my gray first. How I got to this was I used a little bit of black, about probably equal parts of black and brown, and then white as well. So black, brown, and white mixed together. These are going to give me a nice medium neutral gray color, something like this. And yours can be cooler or lighter or darker. I'm just going for a nice transition from my dark blue at the top down to a lighter sky down at the bottom, and this gray will help me to accomplish that. So then I'm just washing dry my brush so I can pre-mix the blue color for you. So this blue, how I got to that was I used my ultramarine blue plus a tiny bit of black paint. The black paint can really take over quickly and turn your ultramarine blue into black. So just be careful, add the black slowly into it. And then once you have a nice dark blue color, what I'm going to do is I add just a dot of white paint. So the white is going to help to make this a little bit, um, have better opacity to it. So I don't need to put as many coats down to get a nice um, soft color to it or a fully executed color. The dark colors on a white background tend to be very transparent or translucent. So if you add a touch of white to it, it will help to give you better coverage um, and less coats to get it nice and, and full. So those are the two colors that I'm going for. What I'm going to do now is put my medium brush away. I take out my large brush. I'm going to start with my dark blue up at the top of my 
um, can, but just making sure I've got a good amount on my brush here. So starting with my dark blue up at the top of my canvas, I'm gonna bring this down quite a, a ways, probably about, I don't know, a third of the way down my canvas. I may end up doing two layers to this, but I'm gonna just start with this one layer and see if it dries the way that I want. And if I need to put a second layer on, I certainly will, because again, these dark colors tend to be a little bit more on the streaky side as they, um, because of the white canvas underneath. You could certainly tone your canvas and make, you know, just do a, you know, maybe like a, a fully gray coat underneath and then apply this on top and then you wouldn't necessarily need as many, um, as much layer to it, but I like doing it this way because it helps me to get a truer color. So I'm still just picking up my dark blue and in a second I'm gonna pick up both my dark blue and my gray. So this is pretty good for me up and through here. Now I'm gonna pick up my dark blue plus gray on my brush, about equal parts of both. And this is gonna help me with the transition or create a nice natural gradient from the dark blue up at the top down to the lighter sky down at the bottom that I am going for. So that's my dark blue and my gray at the same time. I'm gonna get this to blend in nicely in through here. And now what I'm gonna do without washing my brush is I'm gonna start picking up just my gray color. So that's good right in through there. Now I'm just gonna pick up my gray and because I'm not washing my brush, I still have a little bit of that blue within my bristles. So this helps with that gradient process or with creating that nice natural blend going down from a, from a lighter color down to a darker color. And now I'm just gonna pick up that light gray or the, uh, not the light gray, the gray that we created and bring it all the way down to the bottom. And then at the, at the bottom bottom, I'm gonna add a little bit of white to it as well. So I'm pretty much down there right now. This bottom doesn't have to be 100% executed, just getting a light layer on there. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pick up white paint on my dirty brush and I'm gonna go, I'm starting down at the bottom, just getting a nice coat of white and then I'm gonna bring it up, blend it up into that, that color, the gray that we just put on there. So this is gonna create a nice light sky down at what would be the horizon. And I just kind of go back and forth, make sure that these are blended as much as I want. We are going to be using our piece of chalk for the next step. So once you've got this done, if you feel you wanna do a second layer on it, go for it. If not, then you're good to go. And then we'll use our piece of chalk for the next step. So you can just put this large brush away, take out your piece of chalk and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna be drawing an outline for our main lantern and the hands. I'm gonna be using my chalk. I do recommend before you start the step that you make sure that your canvas is dry. So this is that time where you can take an extra long break if you'd like to. Or you can find some kind of fun fanning method to get it dry, or you can do as I did and just whip out a blow dryer and get it dry that way. So what I'm gonna be doing is guiding you through a series of markers so we can make some real basic shapes, especially for the lantern. And we'll just be doing a, a simple outline for the hands. We'll utilize these outlines for the painting process. It'll make it a little bit easier. You can certainly make yours any size or shape that you want, but I'm gonna guide you in um, a series of markers and we'll connect those markers. So I'm gonna go for my lantern first. What I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna start with a oval type of shape for the bottom opening of the lantern. So where I'm, I'm gonna be putting that in, in this area over here. So how you wanna find where this area is, if you find about the center of your canvas, so the center of my canvas is somewhere in through here, and then I'm gonna go about halfway between that and the bottom of my canvas and give myself a little bit of a marker. So somewhere in through there. I'm gonna come um, over to the left about six inches or so from here and then go up maybe about an inch and a half somewhere in through here. So this will represent the two longest corners of my oval. Then if I split the difference between these two about here, I'm gonna go maybe about an inch below it and then maybe about an inch above it, somewhere in through there. Doesn't have to be perfect, just something that will help 
guide you through this oval making process and then I'm just going to connect my markers. So something like this. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a top onto my lantern. These lanterns can be round, they can be square. This oval just represents maybe like the little brace, wire brace down at the bottom of the lantern, but the top can be various shapes. So I'm going to make mine a, looking a little square. So I'm going to take from here and go kind of directly diagonal, maybe shooting towards the top of my canvas. I'm going to stop maybe somewhere in through here. And then I think I'm going to go up to the left just a little bit. So somewhere about here is where I'm going to make my first marker. I'm going to come to the left of that and maybe drop it just a little bit somewhere in through here. So this marker, if I go diagonally towards here, is a little bit to the inside of here. And then over here, I'm going to come over. Uh, this is about the center of my canvas. So I'm going to go over maybe about another inch or so and then drop it about an inch and a half somewhere in through here. So I just have three points up at the top. I can connect these with a couple of kind of saggy lines like that and then I'll connect to the edge of my oval. So on the left hand side I want this to look like it's kind of floating and has a little bit of air in it. So I'm going to get these sides to have a little bit of a curve to them. So I'm going to take from here and then just kind of bring it in just a little bit and then back out towards here. And then on this side I'm going to do the opposite. So I'm going to take this and come out just a little bit and then back in for that one. And that's all I'm going to do for my outline for my lantern. And then I'm going to have my hands. So my hands are going to be down at the bottom of my canvas to the left and they're going to look like they're really just kind of letting go of this lantern. I'm just going to be doing a silhouette of these hands. I'll have a little bit of them illuminated from the lantern, but I just want some real basic shapes. So if you're ever doing something like this on your own, you can always use your own hands as reference. And if I was going to be letting go of something and it's going up in the air, what would my hands be doing? So on this side, I would it's going to be something where I'm going to have my index finger and my thumb and then maybe I'll see a couple of my little fingers sticking out the other side and conversely on the other side it would be doing something similar. So I'm going to start with my forefinger and my thumb, this exterior part of my hand and my wrist. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come directly below this corner of my lantern all the way down to the bottom of my canvas and then I'm coming in maybe about an inch to make myself my first marker and then I'm going to the left of that about three quarters of an inch another marker like that. I'm going to come up from here maybe almost two inches and into the right just a little bit. This is going to be the tip of my thumb and then I'm going to go up a little bit higher than that maybe about by a half of an inch and over to the right and I'm past this marker by about a half of an inch. And that's going to be my index finger. Now I'm going to connect these to give myself um, the outside shape of the hand. So I'm trying to keep my hand out of the way here. I'm going to give myself a little bit like that. This is going to be my index finger coming down towards um, my thumb like this and then the exterior part of my thumb comes down towards my wrist and through there. And then I'm just going to make myself three little marks for my other fingers. We will make these more structured when we paint them in, but because I'm using chalk, the chalk, um, I don't really have as much control over the drawing aspect, so I just am going to make myself a couple of little markers. I'm going to do the same thing over on this side, but my hand is going to be a little bit higher up in the air. So I'm going to come down to the bottom left of my canvas. I'm going to come in maybe about an inch, make myself a little marker, and then I'm going to come in about an inch and a half to two inches and make another marker because this hand's going to be up a little bit higher. I'm going to go to the right of this marker by maybe about an inch and then up just about maybe a little bit higher or maybe about the height of this pointer finger in through here. That's going to be my thumb. And then I'm going to go to the left of that about an inch and then up about another inch. This is going to be my pointer finger. So I'm going to do a similar exercise. We're going to see the side of this hand a little bit differently. So I'm going to take it from this pointer. Oops, I just dropped my chalk. Hold on a second. I've got it back in my hand now. So I'm going to connect this pointer to my, to my forearm. So I'm going to take this. I'm going to give it just a little bit of a back side of the hand. My wrist is going to be about here. And then I just connect it in through there. So something like that. And then this one over here, 
is going to be just, this is going to be the outside of the thumb. That's going to be where the wrist is. And then I'm going to connect it down here with the forearm. I'm going to connect these two similar to how I did over there. I'm going to give myself a little line for the thumb, a little line for my forefinger. And then I have my three fingers over on the other side. So I've got one, two, and then a little third one in through here. And that's all I'm gonna be doing for my outline. We are going to be using our medium brush for the next step, so you can put your chalk away, make any little adjustments that you need to, and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna be painting the base coat for our lanterns and our hands. I'm gonna be using my medium brush. The color I'm using is Burnt Sienna because this will provide me a great base for my skin tone on my hands as well as the lanterns that are being lit up. So I'm not gonna do anything fancy through this process except for be mindful of where my, where my outlines are. So when I do my, my big lantern in through here, I don't need to do any fancy brush stroke, but I do wanna kind of keep the evidence of this particular line right in through here. So I just kind of put a lighter layer of paint in through here so I can see that line. But as far as the lines on the rest of this lantern go, I can erase those with my with my paint. So I can bring my paint all, oops, I was a little outside the lines. I can bring my paint all the way to the edges of this particular lantern. And if I still have the evidence of um, my chalk mark when I'm done with this, that's totally fine. But this will help the, um, the, the process of getting rid of that, that chalk. A lot of times the chalk will just disappear right within the paint, but sometimes you might have a little bit of evidence hanging out around the edges and stuff like that. So just being mindful of that and kind of tackling it whenever you can is fabulous. And then I'm just gonna paint this whole thing in with my burnt sienna. Because burnt sienna will tend to be a little bit on the transparent or translucent side, you may see streaks or some light areas or dark areas. Don't worry about that. We are just using this as a base coat um, and all of the those imperfections will be taken care of during later steps. When I get down to my hands, Again, I'm just gonna be mindful of my chalk marks. Um, and this is where I can start to reshape or make give the hand a little bit of shape. But if you're doing this and it's um, this brush is too big for your particular painting style, you can certainly switch to the smaller brush when, when you're doing this. That's gonna be wherever your comfort zone is. And again, I'm just going up to my chalk mark, but when I'm doing a small object like this, my, my chalk outline might not have been exactly the way that I, I wanted it to. So if I'm going through this process and there's a little bit of um, a chalk area that I'm like, mm, I don't think the, the finger should be out that far, I can leave that, that chalk and that like this thumb, I got this little piece of white chalk up there that I'm not sure I, I think is the correct shape for the thumb. So I'm gonna leave it. And then when I go to, um, after my paint dries, I can always just erase it with a little bit of water. So that's a great thing with, with chalk is you can just get rid of it with a little bit of water. And then these little fingers in through here, I'm just gonna kind of put a little bit of paint to give those little fingertips in through here. And again, this is that area where if, if you felt that this brush was a little bit too big, you could certainly move to a smaller brush for that. I'm gonna go ahead and do this hand over in through here. So what I do when I'm using a big brush like this, just give you a little tip here, and I'm trying to do a small area, I like to take my brush and I spin it in my paint on the side of my palette or uh, against the, the palette. And that gives me a nice point to the brush every time. So that allows me to use one brush for many different um, painting um, pieces. So if, even if I'm doing something that is a seemingly a small um, object, I can still utilize a pretty good sized paintbrush because I know that I'm gonna be using this paintbrush for the big lantern or, you know, allowing yourself the, um, or kind of honing your, your brush skills 
to be able to use one brush for several different things allows you to a little bit of, of liberty and freedom where you're not reliant upon the perfect brush for the perfect uh, you know line like if I was doing something small I wouldn't have to go and and you know find that perfect brush in my toolbox because I know I can use this bigger brush in a different way and get uh, the, the results that I want. So just learning how to use a brush in many different ways allows you to kind of open up the, you know, your, your skill set a little bit and allows you to, again, not be dependent or reliant upon one specific brush to do one specific task. So it allows you to, to just kind of Get, be a little bit free. Oh, I liked that little pinky. <laughs> We're going to leave that pinky because that looks great. So now I'm going to make a whole bunch of other lanterns and I'm going to do these a way smaller than this one. I want this one to be my focal point. So I am just going to take this and make a whole bunch of marks in kind of a um, rectangle type of shape. So this might be the biggest one that I do amongst all the other ones. So I might take, you know, this and just start making these little marks with my brush. You can, you know, they don't have to be perfect. We're going to be making um, bright highlights on them later. They can overlap each other. Maybe I've got one kind of scooting behind here, but I really just want them to look like they're off in the distance and they've got, you know, they're just floating up in the air. This one that we're seeing in through here is again our focal point. So I want these other ones to just kind of be just the background noise. I want them to, to add something to the painting, but I don't want them to take away from my focal point. Maybe I've got a couple of bigger ones up in through here, and I want them the tra trajectory to kind of go up and to the right, because that's where I feel like the hands are kind of pushing this towards, or maybe the wind is taking them all. I'm also doing a couple off the edge of my canvas, so that makes it look like it's going out of the viewing range and it extends the story farther out that 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 field of, vi of vision. And then I can just kind of tap my brush and make as many little ones or big ones that I want. I'm doing various sizes so that way I've got um, the, the dimensional element to this. And then once I've got this done, and if you make any too big, you know, you can always make, you know, put some of your background color in there if you wanted to. And then once I've got this done, I am going to be using my small brush for the next step. So you can fiddle with this as much as you want. Maybe put a couple more up in through here and then you can put this medium brush away, take out your small brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna finish our hands. I'm gonna be using my small brush. The colors that I'm gonna use are black, possibly some brown, burnt sienna, yellow, and white. And what I'm really just looking to do, again, these are very silhouetted because it's nighttime, but my light source is really close to my fingers. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna have a lot of darkness on the bottom and back side of these hands, and then I'm gonna have a lot of little bits of glow on the tips of the fingers and maybe the, the side of the hand. So what I'm gonna first do, so I don't get confused, is I'm gonna get rid of some of my chalk. I just put a little bit of water on my brush and I wanna just, I don't want this chalk to distract me during the painting process. So I'm just getting rid of it with a little bit of water. Um, you could certainly use any, any method you want to get rid of yours. If you still have it on, have some evidence there, you can do whatever you, you've got to do. So once I've done that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my shadows on first. So I'm going to pick up a tiny bit of black and burnt sienna on my brush and my shadows are going to be on the back side of the hands and on the forearms as well. So I have black and burnt sienna and I think I'm going to move my canvas just a little bit so I can reach this with my brush a little bit easier. So black and burnt sienna and I'm putting this on the 
top back side because the hand would kind of shadow this arm in through here. And then I just picked up a little bit more burnt sienna on my dirty brush so I can get it to blend into this forearm and through here. So this is just the forearm I'm working on right now. Then I'm going to put a little bit on the back side of the hand itself. So black with a tiny bit or a burnt sienna with a tiny bit of black. The black can really take over easily. So I do caution you when you're um, wanting to have like a dark version of something and you're using black to help you along just be careful with the black because it so easily can just take over and then everything will just turn black on you and then it'll take a little bit of extra effort to reverse it if you need to so I did that on the back side I also want a little bit maybe on this bottom side of the thumb in through here maybe a little bit down on this side over here and again just thinking of where these shadow maybe these fingers are kind of curled in a little bit so I think I'm going to put a tiny bit inside the hand so again just a little bit of my burnt sienna plus black is going to come down these little fingers in through here and but I'm leaving that the the tip of them we'll put some highlight on that maybe a little bit down this back side of this forefinger as well so now that I've got that on there I'm going to go do the same thing for the other hand before I start adding my highlights on so again just black and burnt sienna is on my brush I'm going to start down in through here because this is farthest away from the light source and again just kind of rubbing it up I'm going to put some on this bottom side of this finger oh, I think I had a little bit too much black on my brush there a little bit on this bottom side or maybe I didn't have enough <laughs> I tell you I err on the side of caution when it comes to my black maybe on the back side of this hand in through here put a, I'm gonna put a little bit more burnt sienna on my brush so I can get it to blend in and the burnt sienna is fabulous because it's gonna give us such a nice natural tone to the skin as if it's being shadowed so that's great um, and then I'm going to put a little bit inside this hand where so I can connect these fingers and put some shadow in through here. So this is black plus the burnt sienna, just getting the inside of these fingers to make sure that we've got some darkness on in through there, maybe a little on the back side of this thumb as well. And then once I've got that, just kind of looking over here if I want to do anything else, I'm thinking that's pretty good. I'm going to wash and dry my brush. I'm going to put some highlights on. So my highlights are going to be pretty darn bright because my light source is so close. So I'm going to start with white and yellow on my brush, about equal parts of each. And I don't need a lot of paint on my brush. I'm going to be putting this on the side that I feel is closest to my light source, which is over there. And I'm just going to be putting these little kind of slivers of this color in through here just giving myself a bit of that highlight and if it's too yellow or too white for you just pick up like I'm gonna pick up a tiny bit of burnt sienna and that burnt sienna can help to um, connect that light area to the dark area but I'm putting back yellow and white back on my brush right now to give myself a little bit of that highlight right on this fingertip in through here and on these little guys in through here. Once I have the yellow and white on those um, little tips, I pull it back just a little bit and then I'm gonna pop in one last little oomph of white on it in a second, but I'm just getting this little bit of a glow, the yellow glow from the, um, from the luminescent value of our, of our light source. So once you get that highlight in there, then you just pick up a tiny bit of white and put a little tiny sparkle on the tips of these fingers. So less of an area than you did the yellow and white. And then I'll go over, maybe a, I think I need a little bit in through here too. Um, and then I'll go over and do the same exercise for the right hand. So I wiped my brush off. I'm picking up uh, yellow and white, which is I think what I had on my brush. <laughs> no, I think I just had white there. So yellow and white is on my brush. Again, I'm gonna. this is gonna be my highlighted area, but I'm not bringing it all the way white yet. And I'm just kind of bringing it down on the side of the fingers that I feel is facing my light source. So this top side of this thumb, the inside of that finger, and the little tips of these guys in through here something like and again this is the white and yellow and in a second i will pull just a bit of white 
um, on top of this in a, in a smaller area just to give me that extra that extra bit of glow. I'm going to pick up a little bit of burnt sienna right now so I can get this to blend in in this bigger area right here. There we go. And maybe a little bit in through here. And now I'm going to wipe my brush off and pick up a tiny bit of white paint and give myself just that little tiny bit of that extra glow right on the tips of these fingers and the edge of this thumb. And then you can fiddle with it all you want. We're going to be using our medium brush for the next step so you can put your small brush away, take out your medium brush, and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're going to do for the next step is we're going to do the second step <laughs> to this main lantern. So this is going to include the coloring of the material for the lantern. I'm going to be using my medium brush. The colors that I'm going to use are white, yellow, red, brown, and that, that should be it. So what I'm in essence doing is I'm going to be giving the illusion of a, lamp, a light inside of it. We will be putting the, the light itself, the flame, on later, but right now I'm going to start the process of illuminating this material by adding the, these color gradients of sort. So I'm going to be doing yellow and white down at the bottom of this section. It's going to fade up into like an orangey color, then a red color, and then brown up towards the top. And I'm going to do the same thing in here. So I'm going to start really light with my yellow and white. I'm going to move into red and yellow, which is going to make like an orange color, then red, and then brown. So they're going to be gradients from light to dark and from light to dark. In order to keep my brain straight so I don't get confused what I'm doing, I do want to have kind of um, like a dark mark uh, for like the pleat or the, um, the brace that's um, holding this kind of square thing um, up. So I'm going to start with a little bit of brown paint on my brush and I'm actually going to just kind of give myself this, this line in through here. And with this brown on my brush, I'm gonna put a little bit of a shadowy type of area up in through here. And then I'm gonna put a little bit of a shadowy area in through here. So this is gonna start that dark um, process for it. And I'm also gonna do the same thing underneath here. So a little bit of brown paint on my medium brush. I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna bring it right up into this crevice and this is where we can start to get rid of our chalk mark. I might pull in a little bit of black too if this doesn't dry as dark as I want it to but I'm just going to start with brown right now to see if I can get it to go to do what I want it to do. So that's going to be my start and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to wash and dry my brush and I'm going to start in with my light areas and I'm doing it in this way because I really want to kind of build my light areas um, the lightest of this gradient so it has some vibrancy to it. So I'm going to start with a little bit of yellow and white on my brush at the same time. I don't need a lot but I want to be able to have kind of a good size area in through here. So I'm going to start, I have yellow, maybe a little bit more yellow on my brush, yellow and white about equal parts. I'm going to start in through here and I'm going to be going left to right. I'm going to kind of trail it off towards these sides like that and I want this area to be pretty darn big where this light the um, where the color the lighter color that I'm using is going to kind of fade up into what would look like the center of my um, of my lantern so I've got that and then I'm just going to kind of fade it out. I'm letting myself run out of paint and I'm using this scrubbing technique as it's fading out in order to give it um, a s kind of soft edges to it. And I'm going to, while this is drying, and again I'm not using a lot of paint so it will dry pretty fast and I'm scrubbing it out until I'm really kind of out of paint. So that allows me to get these really um, thin areas that will dry pretty fast. I'm going to do the same thing in this bottom section, but it's a smaller section so I don't need as much paint on my brush. So just a little bit of the yellow and white, not as much as I did up there. And I'm going to start right down in through here. 
try not to go outside my lines. But if I do, I can just wipe it away with my finger. And I'm just going to kind of go right along this bottom edge in through here like this. And then my light source is going to be in the center. So that's where I'm going to fade this up is going to be into that center area. So like this. And then once I feel like I'm starting to run out of paint, I can start to use that scrubbing type of a technique to get it to blend up into this darker area within that um, within the canvas of that lantern. So something like this or paper, whatever you're, whatever you're envisioning your lantern to be made of. So now that I've got that on there, I'm going to wash and dry my brush again and I'm going to be loading it with red paint. So that's pretty good. I'm going to wash and dry my brush and I'm going to put red paint on it. And this is going to be kind of my mid-tone between my dark and my light, and then we'll get it to blend in with, with everything else. So I've got red paint on my brush, and I'm going to start in the center, and I'm, I'm using a scrubbing type of technique. Again, it's that going to be that circular brush stroke. I don't have to col color in everywhere, especially like where I've got those shadow areas, but I do want it to look like it's a soft kind of gradient. So again, I'm using this circular rubbing technique to, to spread it out a little bit. I'm putting it in through here as well. So again, red on my brush and then allowing it to kind of fade down into that, that brighter area. Maybe we'll get a little bit coming up towards these top areas in through here. This is gonna make it look like it's illuminating, maybe a little bit up in through here, just to get those values to, to start to show. And then I'm gonna put a little bit right in this center area underneath here. So again, just red paint, and red is really transparent, so it's gonna see that other stuff underneath. So if you do put it on top of the, the darkness that you had up at the top, it'll still show that underneath it. Um, so you don't have to fear that you, you did too much. And then I'm going to, without washing my brush, I'm picking up yellow. So right now I have the remnants of my red plus yellow, and I'm going to get it to transition down into this vibrant area. So yellow plus the remnants of my red. And this is where the orange look will start to emerge. So yellow, and but I, the red will stay on your brush for quite a while so you may not need to put any more red on your brush through this particular step but if you felt that you needed to you certainly could and then again just picking up some more yellow to get these two sections to talk to one another and you can see how it's turning into this beautiful orange color because i had that little bit of remnants on my brush and just a little bit more yellow over in through here and then what i'm going to do is I'm going to make sure that I have these light areas in through here just a little bit more vibrant before I call it. Oh, maybe I'm gonna put a tiny bit, I'm picking up a little bit more yellow. I'm gonna put a little bit of a glow up at the top of here as well. Maybe this is just being illuminated from the inside, these little areas up at the top. So you can, you know, it doesn't have to be consistently, you know, just put it here. You can you can put it wherever you feel that it might be. Maybe that's thinner fabric up and through there. So I'm gonna wash and dry my brush and just get these two areas to pop out just a little bit more. So if you're having difficulty with these areas at getting as bright as, as you would want them to, what you can do, I just washed my brush again. I'm gonna put a tiny bit of white paint on my brush. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to um, put a lighter base on a little bit of this area. So I'm tiny bit of white paint on my brush and I'm gonna thin it out so it dries pretty quickly for me. So a tiny bit of white and then just bring it up just a little bit, something like this. This is if you ever need to amp up a, a, a color. If it's not be, like the yellow, I want my yellow to be more yellow and it's not as yellow as I want it here. So that's because it's on top of dark colors. So what you can do is what I'm doing right now, I'm putting a white base underneath that area where I want the color to really pop and to really be its truest color. So this, this white underneath it, and I'm allowing this to kind of fade out. Once it dries, I can pop that yellow on it, which I'm gonna do right now. I'm gonna wash and dry my brush and I'm gonna put um, my yellow back on 
and when I put it on top of this white, it will be as yellow as it can be. So here we go, I'm putting my yellow right on top of here. And now that yellow is way brighter than it was before because I put that white underneath it. And then I'll do the same thing right here. You just wanna make sure it's, it's dry enough for you to put that next layer on top of it. And this is dry enough, so I'm gonna put it right on top of it. And then you can fiddle with this all you want. We're gonna be using our small brush for the next step. So once you've got this done, you can put this medium brush away, take out your small brush, and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna finish our little lanterns, <laughs> the ones way up in the sky. I'm gonna be using my small brush. The colors I'm using, I think, are just gonna be red, yellow, and white, but if I need to or want to go into any of my burnt sienna or brown, I'll let you know. So. Again, I'm just looking to give the illusion of these lanterns being lit up and, and floating off into the beautiful night sky. So I just have to put some kind of color pattern that's reminiscent or similar to what we're doing in here. So we've already got the burnt sienna as the base coat, similar to this. So the other colors that I need to incorporate are my red, yellow, and white. I could potentially need or want some brown, but I'm thinking that they're very small, off in the distance. They've already, a lot of them are already really dark because of that background. So I don't think that brown is gonna be necessary, but if I get to a point where I'm like, mm, I think I want a little bit more darkness, I can certainly add that in. Most of them, I'm just gonna have little twinkles of lights in them, but a couple of them, the ones that are bigger, like maybe this one and maybe one or two up here, I'm gonna give the illusion of that little bit of the bottom, like this one that we see. So the bigger ones are the ones that I'm gonna start with and then I'll work my way to the others. So I'm gonna start with equal parts of yellow and white on my brush. And again, I don't need a lot because these are really, really tiny and the you know, we don't need much for detail at all. So yellow and white, I'm gonna give myself a tiny bit of a oval at the bottom of this, and I can just kind of rub that yellow and white up that um, that canvas or the, the lantern, something like that. And then if I feel that I have any others that I wanna do a similar thought to, like maybe this one I've got a little bit in through here. Again, I, I, I caution you to say, you know, don't use a ton of paint on your brush when you start out. We can, we're all, we can always add more. I'm gonna go do a couple more of these ones up top where I'm gonna see the bottom edge to them as if we're looking from underneath. So a little bit of the yellow and white gives me this oval type of a shape down at the bottom and then I can fade it up both sides. So it looks like it is, um, you know, being illuminated by the light from within and we've got some sort of little gradient and that's probably all I'm going to do for the ones where I feel I would you know maybe see that bit of a detail so now I'm just going to pick up yellow and white and I'm going to start the luminescent um, quality of these just like I did on here so I'm going to have towards the bottom of it I'm just going to kind of put a little bit of the yellow and white and a lot of times it's just gonna be a little bit of mark making with the yellow and the white towards what I perceive to be the bottom of that particular lantern. I'm not concerned about having any specific type of detail. I am really just giving these lanterns some light. We're gonna put some red in a minute and then we'll put um, some little twinkle highlights with some bright white but right now this is just my yellow and white and I'm trying to find them all. <laughs> I'm probably gonna miss some, but right now I think I can, I think I can, I think I can <laughs> see them all, but I, I'm sure I'm gonna miss some. Probably the ones that are on the left side of my main lantern, because I can sense right now that I'm neglecting those ones, so they might be the ones that I miss, but now that I've said it out loud, hopefully I won't miss them. And then, oh, maybe this one's, this one's a little bigger. I think I felt like I wanted to do the circle at the bottom of that one. And I, I'm trying to do different angles, so it looks a little chaotic. I'm going over to these left ones because I've remembered that they're over here. So again, just my yellow and white towards the bottom of those um, lanterns. Now I'm going to 
uh, wash my brush or wash my brush and I'm going to put some red paint on. So this red is going to give you that glow in the middle to top of your lantern. So just a bunch of red paint in the middle of that. And red is one of these those colors that the the thicker it is, the more you have the paint, you know, the thicker the paint is on the on the surface, the brighter it will be. So if I'm going through this and I want some of it to be a little darker, then maybe I don't put my red spot so bright. Or if I want my red spot to be very bright, I put a lot of paint on in there. So you don't have to bring it all the way to the top of the lantern. Um, you certainly could if you wanted to, but for me, I'm just kind of putting it in the middle of the lantern, giving myself something representational to our large lantern that we've done. And then I'm just gonna try and put them maybe at different angles too. Like some of them are, you know, to the left, some are to the right. And as you get into these small ones, it's really just a matter of making polka dots. <laughs> so, and again, I'm just going for a color pattern that's gonna give the illusion of these little these little ones having the lights. And I, I'm sure at times I'm over, um, I'm painting over some of my little yellow glow, which is why I've put in a, another um, pass in a second with my bright um, white that I'll put on in order to get these to have that, that brightness on the inside of them. That was too much paint on my brush. And then I'm just gonna kinda, and of course, if you felt that you needed to go with your smaller brush on these small ones, you could certainly do that. But again, I'm just kind of putting some red on here. I'm gonna go over here and get these guys over here. I'm leaving some of that burnt sienna at the top, again, just to show that as a different color. Um, and now I'm gonna wash and dry my brush and I'm gonna pick up some white paint and I'm gonna give myself the little flame in the in the center so white and some of them again you're you know you're just putting white on there and if when you get done putting the white on there if you're not seeing enough yellow glow you may want to come back and put tiny bits of yellow on top of the white and i'll show you how to do that in a minute too similar to what we did with um, the main lantern. So if you're going through this and it just looks like a bunch of white and red polka dots, then what you can do is in a second, I'll show you once I get all these, once I get all the white parts in here, you can make a, a, another pass with your, um, with your chrome yellow in order to get those lights to turn on a bit more. And you'll see what I'm talking about in a second. Right now, just kind of putting the white dots on underneath the red dots, and then I'm gonna put some over in through here. And again, we're just creating an illusion. So I've got those white dots on there, and if there's areas that don't feel yellow enough or feel glowy enough, you can wash and dry your brush, and maybe you pop on a little bit more yellow right on top of some of that white. Or maybe you bring in some, some I have yellow and a touch of red on my brush. So you can really play with the intensity of these of the glow if you need to you know especially on the ones that are a little bit closer to you so if i felt like i needed a little bit more yellow in through here i just go ahead and add it you know once you do that first pass it doesn't mean you know because michelle just did it in in this many steps that and yours didn't come out exactly the way mine did, it doesn't mean that you can't make another pass on it. So like right now, I feel like I want more yellow. So I'm just going through and adding bits more yellow into mine so I have a bit more glow to them. And then I will, once I've got this done, I'm gonna be using this same brush for the next step. So I'm just putting a little bit more yellow in some of these. And again, just looking for a color pattern and that's making me happy. I'll let it dry. And if I do want to do anything more to it, I certainly will. And then I'm going to be using, that was a little aggressive. <laughs> I'm going to be using this same brush for the next step. So once you've got your little lanterns done, you can wash and dry this brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what I'm gonna do for the next step is I'm gonna finish my lantern by putting the flame inside of it. I'm gonna be using my small brush. The colors I'm using are white, yellow, black, and if I need to go into any other colors, I will let you know. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to first 
put a very light area that's going to represent my flame. Then we're going to add some glow onto the flame and we'll also add some kind of mechanism for the flame to be sitting on because it can't just be floating in nothing. So it's got to be sitting. There's got to be something that it's sitting on. So I'm going to be using a little bit of white plus a touch of water on my brush so my white paint is nice and fluid. I'm going to have my flame is going to sit on a little platform that's going to be about this wide. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just kind of go across this area and I'm going to make myself this um, mass of a light area that is going to represent my flame. I want it to look very um, bold and have a lot of brightness to it. Um, so I'm using a good amount of white, but I, I don't want the white to take too long to dry. So that's why I've got a little bit of water in my brush. Um, so it thins it out a bit and allows it to dry on the quicker side. I'm bringing it all the way up to here and I'm going to show you a neat little trick in a second, but first I'm going to make sure this has enough movement in it. So I'm just kind of pulling some, some pieces out in this direction and maybe they're going up in through there. And you can have your flame whatever way that you like. If you want yours to have more movement to it than mine, so be it. You make it whatever it works for you. So that's pretty good for my area that I want for my flame to be. I'm now going to put a little bit of yellow on my brush. So right now I have white and yellow and I'm going to continue this flame up here with the white and the yellow so it gives the illusion that the flame is behind the um behind the cloth i don't need to do much if you have a lot on your brush just wipe it oops i just picked up some blue by accident hold on one second we don't know we don't want blue here um you can always wipe your brush off or pick up a little bit of water and that's going to just i just want this faint little illusion that's sitting behind my um behind the the cloth that'll give the impression that that flame is in fact behind it as well so i'm just making that little illusion behind there so now that i've got that done i'm going to um wash and dry my brush and i'm going to put a little bit of black on my brush so i can create this little mechanism for it to sit on i want it to be a little diagonal so i'm just going to put a tiny little rectangle in through here that's got maybe some you know diagonal edges to it and you don't need much just something to tells the viewer that this flame is you know has something that it's sitting on so it's not just a magical flame that is floating in the middle of this lantern it's got some some substance to it you could even if you want to add a tiny bit of water to your brush and you can pull out these little braces just the little hint of them coming out towards the side of the um, of the the lantern itself, so that way they look like they're being held onto something. I'm going to put a tiny bit of white paint on my brush right now, just to give a little bit of dimension in this thing here. So something like that. That's perfect. I'm going to wash and dry my brush, and I'm going to put some glow on my flame. So I'm picking up. I washed and dried my brush. I'm picking up just yellow paint right now, and I'm going to put it right on top of some of that. Um, white and you can even put it outside the white as well so this is going to be give you a glow outside that flame something like this and inside the flame so something like that and now I just pick up a little bit more white paint to finish it off give myself some beautiful brightness right up the center of that flame and you can get it to be as bright or as um, luminescent as you want. I'm just picking up some white now and putting in these final bits of brightness. And then you can certainly fiddle with yours all you want. We're going to be using this small brush for the next step. So once you've got this done, you can wash and dry this small brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so we are on to the final step. This is the final step of every painting, which is to sign it. So I typically sign mine in the bottom left or the bottom right corner. I'm gonna be using my small brush. I think I'm gonna go bottom right with burnt sienna. So it's complementary to the rest of the painting. 
and or maybe looks like a lantern way off in the distance. I like to sign mine with my initials, but you could certainly sign yours with your first name or the date or a symbol or whatever you'd like for your identifying mark to be. It's totally fine because it's your painting and you get to sign it however you'd like. And that's gonna conclude this painting. I hope you enjoyed the process. I hope you painted yourself a very inspirational image and I look forward to painting and sipping with you again sometime.